Hey guys, welcome back to the second video of the Sudoku Android tutorial series. In this video, we're going to work a little bit more on the Sudoku board view class, and we're going to start drawing some lines um, just to have the board look like a Sudoku board, and then also allow the user to tap on cells and then highlight that cell as well as um, cells that are in the same row in the column and the same cell group, so like the 3x3 three three square that um, the cells are in. So first things first, we're going to need to override one of our um, standard functions for views, and this function is called onMeasure. Basically what the onMeasure function does is it tells the view how large it should be. Um, so we get passed in some, some variables, some values that tell us how large Android thinks the view should be based on um, certain attributes like whether or not we say to wrap content or match parent. Um, so basically what we're going to do here is just for our size, we'll call it um, just size, that's fine. Size pixels, I guess we'll call it. Um, we're just going to take the min of the two. Oh, with measure spec and height measure spec. Um, and then what we do is we call set measured dimension and we'll just call size pixels, size pixels. So basically what we're doing is we're taking the min dimension in both the width and the height and then setting both the width and the height to be that min dimension. So that way we always maintain a square board. So if we flip it sideways, the board will be um, constrained by the height. But if it's regular, like just portrait mode for your um, device, then it's going to be bounded by the width. Okay. So now that we have that out of the way, we need to get some more variables just to know some information about our board. So we'll call these um, square root size and size. This will basically just tell us, um, basically just tell us the size of our board. Um, for now, we're going to keep them just static variables that are three and nine, but we'll probably make this more flexible that, so that we could have a board that is say um, a four by four or a 16 by 16. So we could have some kind of varying difficulty for, for those that are either getting into Sudoku or not, or like more of an expert. Um, and then we also need something else. We're going to call this um, cell size pixels. And we'll just set this to zero for now. And this will be a float because we're going to be using it to draw. OK, so in the onDraw method, first things first, we're going to recalculate the cell size pixels. And that will just be width um, divided by size, about two float. So we're just dividing the entire width of the of the view and dividing it into the number of cells that there are, which is the size. And then we'll call a new method over here. We'll call it um, draw lines, and we'll pass a canvas into it. So we need to create our new method, um, draw lines, and this will take a canvas. The reason we're splitting this out into a method is because the draw, uh, the on draw function is going to be um, getting a little bit larger, and so we'll just want to keep it small and break out things into logical chunks. Okay, so now that we're in here, we can actually move this draw rect into the draw lines function because it is drawing the outside border. And then what we also want to do now is just iterate um, for i in one until size. So this is just Kotlin's way of doing a for loop. One until size creates a, a list of numbers, and then i will just iterate over that list. Um, so yeah, one thing we one other thing that we need is this thick line paint. We're going to make another one called thin line paint because if you've ever looked if you've ever looked at a Sudoku board, um, the the lines are thick and thin depending on like the thick lines kind of delineate the cell groups that I was talking about, and then the thin lines are all the other lines. So we'll just copy exactly what thick line was and change this to two, so it's just a little bit thinner. Okay, so now we need to decide when we want to draw a thin line versus a thick line. And a thick line happens basically every three cells, or actually every square root size cells. So we just want to draw a thin line, or sorry, a thick line, when i mod square root size is equal to zero. So the cool thing about Kotlin that we can do is we can decide, um, we can use this when block, which is basically like a switch statement. And that will allow us, instead of just being a switch statement, it also returns a value. So we can set some sort of value based on a condition. So our condition will be 
i mod square root size. And so when this is zero, we want to return um, a thick line paint. And otherwise, we want to return a thin line paint. So you can see this looks exactly like a switch statement from Java. Well, not exactly, but very similar. We have some sort of variable that we pass in, and then we have cases for what that variable is equal to. The cool thing is this when block itself evaluates to a value, so it will return whatever we put into here, and then it can assign it to the paint to use value. So instead of having two statements where we draw things, we can actually just decide the paint and then use that in one generic draw statement. Okay, so now that we've got that out of the way, we want to do canvas.drawLine. And first we'll draw, um, we will draw uh, the vertical lines. So the x value basically will stay the same. And that x value will be i times cell size pixels. And then the starting y value should be zero for the top. The stop x will be the same, same um, value. And then the last, or the, the stop y should be the height. And then in there, we're going to put paint to use. So that's the paint that we use to draw this thing. Now, if you click on this and press Alt uh, Enter, we can press this put arguments on different lines and it'll make it a little bit more readable for us. Okay, let's do the same thing, but for a um, horizontal line this time. Yes, horizontal line. So the y value will be staying the same. So our starting x should be zero, just to be on the left side of the screen. Our starting y should be i times cell size pixels. Our ending uh, x should be the width uh, to float. And our uh, ending y will also be the same as it was before, i times cell size pixels. And then we again want to put in the paint to use. So basically what we're doing in this loop is just iterating from one to nine and drawing a line at each place. So this should draw our lines. Let's run it real quick and make sure that it works correctly. Okay guys, we can see here that our Sudoku grid has rendered correctly, which is an awesome first step towards creating our Sudoku game. So now let's move on towards um, trying to get some sort of notion of a selected cell. So to do this, we need to create a couple more variables. We'll call these um, selected row and selected call. And the reason we'll set these to negative one is so that there is no selected row or column to begin. And we'll consider just negative one in each of them to be an invalid case. So now that we have these selected, uh, selected cell variables, we need to actually um, create some sort of logic to draw them. So we'll create this new function and we'll call it fill cells. Um, and it'll be similar to the draw lines method. And we'll take a canvas. And this will be where we fill in the cells. So to do this, we need two for loops. Um, we need a row for loop. And that's going to be r in 0 to size. And column in 0 to size. So we're just going to iterate over each row and column combination and determine uh, what we should draw in that cell, basically. So before we actually figure out what we're going to draw, we need to um, create some more paints. We need first we need a paint called uh, selected cell paint, and we'll do the same sort of pattern here, except the style and stuff will be different this time. The paint dot style is going to be fill and stroke, so that it fills in like a solid color, and then the color will be color dot parse color, and I've actually got some predetermined colors for us. Um, this will be 6EAD3A. And then we have another one very similar, but this one will be for like, um, we'll call it a conflicting cell paint. So basically this is the case when it's like the same row, column, or cell group as this currently selected cell. So this um, value is EFEDEF. And this will just be like a light gray. It's kind of hard to see, but uh, we might change that. But for now, it's fine. So let's go through a couple of cases. We're going to do the same thing as always. Um, basically, if row equals negative 1, sorry, if selected row equals negative 1 or 
Actually, we don't even need to do that. Let's do it on the outside of this iteration. So if selected row equals negative one or selected call, selected call equals negative one, then we just want to return out of this function because basically there's nothing for us to fill because the selected row, is like it's not a selected cell. Then otherwise we can kind of go through specific cases. So if row equals selected row and column equals selected call, selected call, then what we want to do is draw um, a selected cell. So we'll actually create another method called fill cell, and this will take um, the row, the canvas, the row column, and then um, the paint to use, which will be the selected cell paint. And let's go to the next case. So if that's not the case, and um, else if, it should be, if the row equals selected row, or the column equals the selected column, then we should fill the cell the same way, but with a um, conflicting cell paint. So basically this is either the selected row is the same or the selected column is the same as the current column, but they're not both the same, so it's not a selected cell. And then the last case is when they're in the same cell group. So we'll do row divided by square root size and selected row divided by square root size and column divided by square root size equals selected call divided by square root size. And basically what this is doing is we divide by square root size, which puts, um, basically if your like row was zero, one, two, dividing by the square root size would make it zero. If it's um, three, four, five, it will make it one. So like basically it groups them into, um, it groups each cell group it groups each cell into its cell group, and we compare those to make sure that they're the same. And if they are, then what we want is to do the same thing as before with the conflicting cell pane. Okay, great. So let's create that helper method, fill cell. Um, and fill cell will take, again, the canvas, a row, which is an integer, a column, which is an integer, and then some sort of paint. And in here, we'll just do canvas.drawRect, and the starting um, x would be column times cell size pixels. The starting y would be row times cell size pixels. Um, and then we wanna do column plus one times cell size pixels, row plus one times cell size pixels, and then lastly, our paint. So basically what this is doing is drawing a rectangle from the start of the cell to the start of the next cell. Okay, last thing we need to do, um, actually let's just test to make sure that this works correctly. We're gonna put in a zero, zero for this and then make sure that it fills in the correct values. So let's just run that and uh, see what it looks like. Okay guys, here we go. We can see that we have a selected cell here, zero, zero and that it's very faint, but you might be able to see it better on your screen, that the same row, the same column, and the same cell group are all highlighted. Um, we'll probably change that color later though. Okay, last thing we need to do is handle uh, a touch event. So let's go all the way down to the bottom and we're gonna override one of the view functions. And this is the on motion, uh, sorry, on touch event, on touch event method. So in here, we need to return a Boolean. And make sure you remove this question mark here just because it doesn't need to be a nullable. So we need to return a Boolean. And what that Boolean is, is basically whether or not we process the event. So we can use the same logic as before um, with the when statement. And we'll just pass the event in. And basically when, actually we'll pass the event dot, um, sorry, event dot action in. And when this is a motion event dot um, action down, so like the person presses on the screen, we're gonna do a handle touch event, event dot x, event dot y, and this will be a helper method that we create. And then otherwise, we're gonna return false. And in here, we should return true. 
So basically we're saying if it's an action down event, then we'll handle that and return true because it's been processed. Otherwise we return false because we want whatever else is there maybe to process it. Okay, so let's create that private function handle touch event. And that's gonna take an X float and a Y float because the event.x and the event.y are both floats. And then we need to convert these values into some sort of row and column. So we're gonna set selected row equal to um, x divided by cell size pixels. And we'll convert that to an integer because rows and columns should be integers. And then the selected column should be equal to, sorry, the selected row should be um, the y value. And the selected column should be the x value divided by cell size pixels, and then convert that to an integer. So now the selected row and the selected column are set. What we need to do now is call the invalidate function, which basically tells um, the view that its, its render is no longer valid. So it will recall the draw method, which we'll call the, the onDraw method here, and then we'll fill the cells and redraw all the lines. So let's just run this one last time, um, just to make sure that it's working correctly. Okay guys, we can see that uh, we have our thing rendered correctly and that if we click on the screen, it updates everything accordingly, goes to the correct cell and then highlights all of the correct things. So that's looking really good. Um, that's all we're gonna do for now, but I think next tutorial we'll start uh, building some sort of backend to handle the game and handle the board. And we'll probably draw, um, we'll load in a board maybe from memory and then, sorry, from storage and then, um, actually be able to draw that board on the screen. Um, so yeah, thank you guys very much for watching. Be sure to leave a like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next tutorial.